Okay, my name is Kristen. I'm a college student um, at Oklahoma State, and I am going to tell you what you need to know before you go out and you get yourself a Rottweiler. Um, or if you already have one, this would probably be really good for you to watch, just because you're probably wondering, what do I do now? So I got my Rottweiler about a year and a half ago. No, I did not do research. Uh, do I regret it? No. <laughs> um, she's very large. She's pushing 90 pounds, which is about how much I weigh. Um, <clears throat> so obviously, I mean, they're going to get pretty big. You should probably know that. Um, one of the other things you should know before anything is their history and why they are the way that they are. So Rottweilers were originally intended to use um, for hard labor um, around a farm, um, like herding cattle or pulling carts, but just because they were bred for that does not mean that they were born knowing how to do that. They had to go through extensive training before they were able to do that on their own without a bunch of guidance. So um, if you apply that to today, having a Rottweiler, you obviously are going to need to put a lot of time into training them. Um, when I got my dog, I was not aware of how much time it would take. I was like, oh my god, that's a cute puppy, gotta have it. Um, and then she started growing, and she started, you know, fighting me when I took her for walks. Um, she would jump on me, and she's about as big as I am, and so that's not good. She cannot be doing that. Um, and so I started doing the research, and what I'm going to tell you is what I wish I would have known before I got her. Um, no, I do not regret getting her at all. Um, the thing is, there are two kinds of people in the world. Um, you either treat your pets like family or an object, and I'm the family kind. And so I didn't do the research, but, I mean, she's my dog. I'm not going to put her in a pound because she got too big or I didn't know she would be the way that she is. Um, if you're just trying to get a Rottweiler because they're kind of badass to have, um, you probably shouldn't because you might not be able to give them the time or, you know, the financial, it's very expensive, you know, feeding a Rottweiler, and you're going to want to give them good food. Um, they, they have, you know, health problems, they have all sorts of things, but I'll go into that later. So I kind of give you a brief history. They need a lot of training. So, I mean, you're going to need to walk them, exercise them. You're going to need to socialize them with other dogs, uh, maybe go to a dog park. Or I actually took mine to the farmer's market, and the first time I did that, it did not go very well. Um, old ladies were like, oh, my God, why'd she bring her Rottweiler? Like, that's crazy. And I was like, because of ladies like you, I'm sorry, but I'm trying to socialize her so she's not like that. Um, so that didn't go very well, but she was very young and now she's a lot better about stuff like that. I mean, she will, she kind of, if a stranger comes into my home, she barks at them, but it's kind of more to just scare them. She doesn't actually try and like jump and attack them, um, which is good. Um, the only thing is I would not fully trust her with a stranger just because she is extremely protective of me. Which is another thing. You cannot let them pull you. You cannot let them drag you anywhere. They cannot be put in a position where they think they're dominant. So if you're going to have one, you need to be confident in yourself and in your strength to control that dog. And so I'm not afraid of her, obviously, because, I mean, I raised her from Peppy. I know what she does, what she likes, what she, how she reacts to stuff. And so if she has something in her mouth that she should not have in her mouth... I don't say, Emma, come here, let me get it out of your mouth. I walk up to her, reach my hand in her mouth, and get it out. Um, you need to realize that these dogs are, they're very intelligent. I cannot put into words how intelligent my dog is, but they're kind of, they're just so strong that sometimes the strength kind of overtakes the intelligence and they just, their instincts kick in. And so that is why they need so much training. Um, and a lot of people just avoid them based on their appearance, which is another thing that I wanted to talk about, was because Rottweilers are a direct reflection. Their temperament is a direct reflection of the way that they were raised. And so, I mean, if you're going to raise them with a lot of other animals, socialized, they're going to be extremely good dogs. 
But if you kind of keep them in a kennel the whole time and just take them out when you want to be a badass and walk around with a Rottweiler, they're going to be it's going to be very frustrating for you. And that's usually how they end up in a pound because people just don't want to deal with them. And so what leads me to my next point is the financial cost of having a Rottweiler. I was not aware that she would go through a 40 pound bag of dog food um, like in a week, but she will. And I won't give her anything that's not, you know, if it's full of fillers and stuff like that, they're just going to get fat. So you need to be ready to invest in a good dog food, in healthy, you know, you need to make sure they get all their shots. Um, I would suggest neutering them because when they have babies, usually they they have a lot of hip problems, especially if they try and have a litter before they're like two years old. Um, and so you really need to know that there's a lot of cost involved in having a Rottweiler and taking proper care of the Rottweiler. Um, so there's something you need to know about their health. Um, it's very common in Rottweilers to have hip or elbow dysplasia. Um, also, German Shepherds and Rottweilers, it's very difficult for them to recover if they do contract the parvovirus. Um, my dog Emma, she did. Um, she started throwing up and was very tired all the time and I thought, you know what, I can take her to the vet. Because I was not going to wait until she started excreting blood because at that point there's really nothing you can do for them. And so I took her into the vet. They kept her for about a week and a half. She did survive, obviously. She's here with me. She's very strong and very healthy now. It did cost me about $500 for her parvo. That does not include all of her shots, um, all of her food that she eats, which is a lot. Um, so they're very expensive dogs. Especially if you have expensive things laying around the house, you know, like a $400 chair that she decides, oh, you know what, this is a cool looking chew toy. And then you're out $400 and that adds on to the cost of a Rottweiler. So they can be very expensive, even more so if they're not properly trained. A very important thing you need to know if you're going to be socializing your dog, which you should, is all of the things that you're going to want to take into consideration before you leave your house with the Rottweiler. You're going to need a, a very good collar, a strong collar. I would not suggest a harness because it gives them more leverage against you and they can pull you a lot easier. Um, I personally have a regular collar on her and then I also have a shock collar. Now, you can have all sorts of different collars. Um, I use a shock collar on a very low setting only if I absolutely have to use it. Otherwise, I just kind of tug. She responds very well to a choker collar. Um, which just is just a chain that goes around her neck and when she pulls it kind of tightens um, and then when she stops pulling it loosens back up there's also I don't know what they're called but they're the collars that have the spikes on them I personally prefer not to use one of those because it you really need to know how to use it if you use it incorrectly there's a very good chance you could impale those spikes into your dog's neck you don't want to do that obviously and so another thing is if you tie a yellow ribbon to your dog, that's a universal symbol that says, do not pet my dog. A lot of people don't know that. So you might want to get a harness or a collar or some sort of badge that you can attach to the already existing harness or collar that says, you know, do not pet warning, you know, not a safe dog to run up to you and start petting. And a lot of children don't understand that. I took her to the that farmer's market and little kids were coming up and they're like, oh, what a cute dog. Can I pet her? And she was going crazy. And even if she's barking and growling and, you know, drooling, they're still going to want to pet her. I don't know what it is with kids. They're weird, but they don't understand that that dog is not safe yet. Until they're trained, they're not safe, even if they are trained. If they feel like their owner is, you know, being threatened, they're going to kick into protection mode. And that's not always a good thing if there are children around because you don't want to be liable for, you know, harming a child because people are like, oh, it's the Rottweiler's fault. No, just because your dog is highly trained, you know, you still have to be careful. Be smart when you have a Rottweiler.